global electric car sales increased 61% in July to 780,000 in one month alone. Well, the electric revolution is here. It's coming fast. And you know what? A lot of people don't even realize what's going on. But you, my friends, know exactly what is. Hello and welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. My name is Sam Evans. And I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. I hope you've had an amazing week. I sure have. I love reading news like this. I love seeing Tesla sales figures that just came out a few days ago. And I love seeing BYD sales figures as well. Now, in spite of all the challenges with the distributor here of BYD in Australia, BYD and of course, Tesla as well. Yeah, I know a lot of you don't like Elon, but you know what? It is what it is. Those two car companies are truly leading the world. And it's really amazing to see. The way that they're ramping up their electric vehicle sales is incredible. It shows you, right? What's happening right now? Sort of a little thing like, remember when mobile phones, remember we used to use those old mobiles and they had a tiny little screen on them and heaps of buttons. You had to press all the buttons. They're all like hand press buttons, kind of like the way analog cars were, it's kind of like the way that, you know, to be honest, even a lot of cars still are now that come out of Japan and and America and a lot of other countries, still very analog. Anyway, remember those phones? And we always used those, it was Ericsson, there was Nokia, that was really probably the two biggest players. And then there was Blackberry, those three brands. And before you knew it, all of a sudden, Samsung and Apple, they were the two big players. And what happened to Nokia? What happened to Ericsson? And what happened to Blackberry? Well, they all just disappeared pretty quickly. That is what is happening now. Whether people like it or not, those are the facts. Now, global passenger electric car sales have done incredibly well over the last few months, but we're only starting to see this real ramp up of this S curve here. Disruption happens in interesting ways. According to EV volumes data, which was shared by Jose Pontes, 778,000 new passenger plug-in electric cars were registered in July. That's 61% more than a year ago. That's one of the best monthly results and the best first month of a quarter. But from what I'm seeing coming from China in August, August was even better. Compared to the overall market, plugins hold 14% of the market, including 10% for battery electric cars. So what does this mean? One in every 10 new cars is already 100% electric. One in every 10 worldwide. That includes every country in the world. The segment is expanding quickly against all challenges, including crazy challenges like the cost of lithium skyrocketing, the cost of nickel going up so much, manganese, cobalt, aluminium, prices all increasing. The car market, they are finding ways to adapt. At least some of them are anyway, some of the brands that is. Meanwhile, conventional hybrids, well, they're down year over year for the fourth consecutive month. And the irony is, right, we're seeing this. We're seeing these hybrid sales go down month after month after month. We're seeing electric vehicle sales go up month after month after month. BYD says they have 700,000 pre-orders. Tesla's probably got a similar number. I mean, Ford's got hundreds of thousands. GM's even got hundreds of thousands. Pre-orders are going mental for electric cars. Toyota comes out and says, oh, no one wants electric cars. The whole idea that Joe Biden wants 50% EVs in 2030 is not going to work because no one wants them. It's a joke. All of a sudden, what do they do? They go and invest literally four days after they made that statement. They go and decide to invest another $5 billion in a battery factory, in two different battery factories, in fact. And then we see these crazy sales numbers from BYD, right? Crazy sales numbers from BYD. And the irony about all of this is what? Who's going to be building? <laughs> Who's going to be building the Toyota Corolla? Well, I can tell you now, it ain't a Toyota. But it looks like one because it's got Toyota badges on the ends. It's a BYD. Plug-in car registrations. In the month of July, electric vehicles, 556,000. They're up 73% year on year. 10% market share worldwide. Plug-in hybrids, 222,000. Up only 36% year on year. And a 4% market share worldwide. You can see, right? Even though BYD's plug-in hybrid sales are skyrocketing, Plug-in hybrid sales are still really only increasing at a fairly slow pace in comparison to EV sales worldwide. 
Total, 780,000, an increase of 61% year over year. So you can see here, really it's like a misleading number because it includes plug-in hybrids. If we only look at EVs, they're up 73% year over year. And I'm, from what I'm seeing from China, from August, I reckon more than likely, it'll be 80% by the time we get to the end of August supply numbers. And they're published from all the different countries around the world. So far this year, more than 4.9 million passenger plug-in electric cars were registered globally, compared to almost 6.5 million for the full 12 months of 2021. I think we're likely to see around 9 million registrations of plug-in electric cars by the end of this year worldwide. And that would be around 16% of the global vehicle market share. Now of those vehicles, electric, purely electric vehicles are 3.66 million, 9% share. Plug-in hybrids, 1.3 million, 3% share for a total of 5 million and 12% share. So as you can see, the percentage of EVs sold is continuing to increase as we get further along during the year, because now we're at more than just over 10%. You can see earlier this year, we're at closer to 7%. Model rank, July was a really good month for BYD. It put multiple models into the top 10, including the Song Bev plug-in hybrid as well, with 37,800 at number one. Then there was another BYD vehicle. Then between those two, there was the Wuling Hongwai Mini EV in second place with 37,000 deliveries. Tesla Model Y was fourth, and the first legacy automaker to rank in this list was the Volkswagen ID4 in eighth place worldwide with 19,000 deliveries. Now, those numbers are going to look very, very different for August because, for example, Tesla has begun its production once again of Model Ys at their factory in China, which was basically put to a halt almost so that they could make their production lines much more efficient, much more effective, and be able to pump out way more cars from that factory. So those numbers are going to be very different. We're still going to see a lot of BYDs though, because BYD just increased their sales again as well to hit 175,000 plug-in and fully electric vehicle deliveries in the month of August. So BYD is probably going to have maybe even six vehicles of the top 10 in August. As you can see here, they had five of the top 10 in July. What about worldwide? Well, the Tesla Model Y remains the top selling plug-in car model after the first seven months of this year with a huge advantage over the Wuling Hongwa Mini EV. The Tesla Model 3 sits in third place, but its advantage over the BYD models is shrinking. That's only though if you include plug-in hybrids. If you don't include plug-in hybrids, then its advantage isn't shrinking at all. In fact, it's actually increasing. First place worldwide, first seven months of the year, Model Y, 344,900, let's just go 345,000 deliveries for the first seven months of the year. Wuling Hong Wai Mini, 245,000. Tesla Model 3, 237,000. BYD Song, 197,000. BYD again, BYD again, BYD again. Seventh place worldwide, Volkswagen. And then the next legacy automaker is Hyundai, sitting in 13th place with the Hyundai Ioniq 5. After that, we've got the Kia EB6 with 48,000 deliveries. And in 20th place, the Ford Mustang Mach-E with 45,000 deliveries. So if we have a look at the top 20 selling cars worldwide for the first seven months of this year, you can see that only four of the top 20, only four of them were legacy auto manufacturers. This is the insane disruption happening now. 16 of the top 20 best-selling EVs worldwide and not part of the established legacy auto group, right? Now, if we don't include Tesla in these numbers, let's say we remove Tesla, the majority of these are Chinese. The majority of these are Chinese vehicles. And I just can't see that changing anytime soon. China is ramping production of EVs far faster than any other country in the world. So if anything, this advantage is just getting bigger for them. Now, hopefully, this new bill passed in the United States, which, you know, better late than never, hopefully it helps to reverse this very scary trend. You know why this trend is scary? Because this is getting to be a bit of a monopoly here for China. So what about brand rankings? Well, in July, BYD had a huge record of 160,000 plugins. In August, they hit 175,000. And remember, these brand rankings include plug-in hybrids. Obviously, the brand rankings would be quite different if we didn't include plug-in hybrids. In first place, was BYD with 160,000. Tesla was second 
with 52,000. Volkswagen was third with 46,000. SAIC, General Motors, and Wuling, their joint venture with the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, was in fourth place with 40,000. Then GAC, another Chinese manufacturer, was in fifth place with 25,000. Then Geely, Chinese again. BMW in eighth place. Dong Feng, Chinese again in ninth place. And Hyundai in tenth place. Now, those numbers are going to be very, very different for August because we already know Tesla produced at least 77,000 vehicles alone from its factory in Fremont. More than likely, I would say Tesla probably produced around 140,000 electric vehicles worldwide in the month of August. So big ramp up for them. Also, obviously, big ramp up for BYD, hitting 175,000. Plus, we just found out BYD plans on manufacturing and delivering 4 million electric cars in 2023. BYD and Tesla going crazy. Everyone else playing catch up. China going crazy. That's what's really happened over the first seven months of this year. What I want to know though is what you think. Who do you think is going to win in terms of over the next 12 months? Who are going to be the big players who start to take market share? Who's going to really start to ramp up? We know Ford's ramping up. We know GM keeps talking about ramping up. You know, hopefully they do start actually ramping up and stop talking about it. That's what would be better for me. I'd prefer if they just ramped rather than talked. But that's what Mary Barra likes to do. Anyhow, we do know that GM did just open that battery factory in Ohio for more battery packs to go into their colossal Hummer EVs. Now, hopefully they start making the Silverado EV soon. Hopefully we start seeing those Tesla Cybertrucks on the road soon. You know what? It's an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be following the electric vehicle revolution. Really, the way I like to see this is the electric vehicle global disruption. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day. Bye-bye.